Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here, your source for gaming, tech, emulation, and open source news. Let's get started. Alright, to kick things off, we're talking about Nintendo Switch emulation with Ryu Jinx, and this one is being talked about quite a bit online. It turns out here that Nintendo owns the Ryu Jinx domain. Now, I think a lot of people already knew that Nintendo owned yuzu-emu.org, and that was after the whole Nintendo vs. Yuzu lawsuit. But surprisingly here, not surprisingly, Nintendo also owns RyuJinx.org, meaning Nintendo owns the domains to the two biggest Switch emulators out there. Now, I would say one of the most interesting parts of this whole thing is the fact that we don't know what happened behind the scenes with Nintendo and RyuJinx. It's been very private. I don't know if there was an actual threat of a court case or anything like that, but it seems like there was. Interestingly here, I'm very surprised to see that Ryu Jinx did transfer domains to Nintendo. Now taking a look at some of the comments on that post, and this is where things I would say get even more interesting and also kind of more confusing. This person says, okay, so we can use Ryu Jinx now because it's a legit Nintendo software. And I think, well, Ryu Jinx now is Nintendo software, is it not? I, I really don't know. Now, taking a look at the rest of the comments, and there's some very weird and interesting stuff in there. For example, this one right here. This all but confirms that the main dev was paid off by Nintendo since there never was a lawsuit. He probably got the old Chicago variant. We give you $1 million for your domain or sue you for $100 million. He got a deal and time to consider it, so he got something. Then he said it was a threat so he wouldn't have to share. And this person says, I would imagine their offer was much less, like 100000 So my takeaway from all of this is, yes, it does appear that Nintendo went after Ryu Jinx and, well, took it over, just like they did with Yuzu, except instead of a lawsuit, there was something behind the scenes that we don't know. And people are still speculating as to what exactly happened behind the scenes between Nintendo and Ryu Jinx. I don't think we'll ever know. But moving on, and next up, we're talking about Gopher64, which is a new N64 emulator that's written in Rust, and Gopher64 just got a brand new update. So at the time of filming, version 0.1.10 is the latest update. It's a very binary update. Anyways, there's nothing here I see earth shattering or huge in terms of new features or anything like that. The biggest thing in my opinion, or at least one of the biggest things in my opinion, is just the update to Parallel RDP. Gopher64 is 100% free, it's open source, it's available for Windows and Linux, and for those who may not be aware, the main developer behind Gopher64 is the same main developer behind Simple64. Next up, we're talking about Rose Tinted Spectrum, which is a retro gaming YouTube channel, or was a retro gaming YouTube channel. According to YouTube here, the channel no longer exists. It seems to have been wiped from the face of the earth, and the creator of the channel doesn't know why. So here's their tweet. Hey Team YouTube, you've terminated my channel for spam deceptive practice abuse policies that I haven't violated. I've appealed this and your automated system has kept it terminated. Can I have a human look at this, please? And it doesn't seem like they've had a human take a look at it. It seems, too, that they're getting a ton of support. For example, Kim Justice says, The channel of Spectrum Tinted has been flagged as spam and removed from the platform in total error, and your systems don't give them the chance to speak with a real person. This sort of thing causes a lot of undue stress and should be sorted. Banjo Guy Ollie says, I cannot understand what kind of reasoning would lead you to think a harmless retro gaming focused channel violated your policies, especially when you let some truly problematic channels flourish and thrive. At the very least, provide actual reasons. Shame on you. Slopes Game Room says, Share this. Rose Tinted Spectrum makes incredible content and we have even collaborated a few times. No idea why the channel was terminated as it's gaming and not breaking any rules. And even Did You Know Gaming waited on this situation. Hey Team YouTube, your automated system banned this channel for absolutely no reason, appealed and denied for no reason. This is completely unacceptable and a slap in the face of all creators. Claiming this is irreversible is deeply concerning too and simply cannot be true. Now to be honest with you, I don't know a whole lot about Rose Tinted Spectrum. I think their YouTube channel had around 16,000 subscribers, give or take. But unfortunately, it's not like I can go to the channel and look at it and watch their content or anything like that because YouTube has taken it all down. I did find this, though. It's a panel, and it was from about six months ago. If you were familiar with the channel, if you've watched the content, would you have any idea as to why they may have been banned? If you do, let me know in the comments below. And if you don't, do you think you have an idea on what could have led to it? 
I really don't know here, and I'm very curious to see what happens. And speaking about getting in trouble for stuff, next up we're talking about Marvel Rivals, and this news is taking the internet by storm right now. Marvel Rivals employees arrested for allegedly laundering over $130 million. And a lot of people are wondering if this is going to impact the future of Marvel Rivals. So it seems that nine employees were arrested in connection with a possible money laundering scheme. An executive and several other former employees allegedly laundered money through contracts made with up to 28 different business partners. Now, if you wanted to read more about it, I do recommend checking out the article. And like everything I talk about, link will be in the description below right at the bottom. In my opinion here, I think Marvel Rivals may be impacted. I mean, if there is money laundering involved and they're investigating they're probably going to want to look into the game and see what's going on. But let me know your thoughts about this one in the comments below. Do you think that this is going to spill bigger problems for Marvel Rivals and NetEase, or do you think this game is going to continue on unaffected and will release on time? Next up, we're talking about the Grammys. Now, in yesterday's video, we talked about how there was a video games category for the Grammy Awards and how I'm predicting that the God of War Ragnarok is going to win it. Anyways, here there's also another song that has been nominated, and this is not in a video games category. The category is Best Arrangement, Instrumentals, and Vocals, and it's Last Surprise from Persona 5. So Charlie Rosen says, Just nominated for my fourth Grammy in a row. So thrilled to be nominated alongside my harmonic bro in crime, Button Masher for our co-arrangement of Last Surprise from Persona 5. If you wanted to see this one, it is up on YouTube, but it was released 10 months ago. And again, like everything I talk about, link will be in the description below right at the bottom. It is on the 8-Bit Big Band's YouTube channel. Next up, we're talking about a Linux operating system, Cache OS. Now, for those who may be unaware, Cache OS is designed to deliver lightning fast speeds and stability, ensuring a smooth and enjoyable computing experience every time you use it and it is available for desktop PCs as well as gaming handhelds like the ROG Ally. So the latest release of Cache OS is pretty hot off the press. It is based on Arch Linux, and the latest update here has improvements for AMD and NVIDIA GPUs. And for the handheld edition of Cache OS, they say ROG Ally X support should have been improved. Now there is something worth pointing out here. There are different versions of Cache OS, for example, the handheld edition and the PC edition. And if you're accidentally trying to install the handheld edition on the PC edition, there is now a warning. It'll warn you that it's installing on an unsupported device. If you use Cache OS, let me know your thoughts about it in the comments below. If you've got a handheld here, it supports the ROG Ally, Steam Deck, OLED, and LCD, and Lenovo Legion Go. And speaking about PCs and handhelds, next up we're shifting a little bit here, grouping PCs and handhelds together and talking about PCs, handhelds, and consoles. And it appears that Sony is not giving up on the PSN account requirement for PC games. So if you are a PC gamer and I guess a handheld gamer, you may not like that news. So here's a quote from the investor's call. It was translated from Japanese to English on the fly, so it may not be 100% accurate. And we're going to have to paraphrase a little bit for you in just a second. But here is the quote. We have learned a lot. The way to face the issues regarding PC, for instance, the PlayStation accounts that we have offered. By offering them, for instance, sometimes that tends to invite pushback. But for the live service games, in order to maintain order of the gaming so that anybody can enjoy the game safely, we need to create an environment conductive to that and, of course, enjoying the game freely. So the common understanding of this one is Sony realizes there's pushback for requiring PSN accounts on PC games. That should be no surprise. And the second thing here is the reason they have PSN accounts is so people can enjoy the game safely. And that may be because of multiplayer games where you ban people and make sure they're having a PSN account. Things can be tracked a little bit better. You can report people better and whatever, maybe blocking and all of that stuff. But at the same time here, it does not address the fact that some games that are single player require PSN accounts which doesn't make any sense for somebody enjoying a game safely. So while I may not agree with having PlayStation accounts required on PC games, I can kind of see Sony's angle for multiplayer games and requiring a PSN account. Sure, whatever, I'll get over it. But for the single player games here, this quote doesn't address that. It, it doesn't make any sense to me, and I think some people are taking issue with it. So taking a look at some of the comments on this article, and this person says, mm, sure, what does a PSN account have to do with playing safely again? Because all I see is another point of failure for personal data, and of course, personal data about its customers for Sony to sell. And that's the exact opposite of safe. 
This person says, what makes it safer is Sony's ability to revoke your license at any time. This person here says, let Sony maintain control over its games, I'll maintain control over my wallet. Let me know your thoughts about this one in the comments below for the entire situation. Next up here, we're quickly talking about the upcoming smartphone, the Red Magic 10 Pro Plus. This one does feature a Snapdragon 8 Elite. We've talked about this one in the past as the phone is designed for gaming. And based on some recent testing here, it just set an Antutu record. Now, interestingly, it appears that Red Magic beat itself to take first place here. The current first place phone, and I'm assuming it's going to be replaced by the Red Magic 10 here, is the Red Magic 9 Pro featuring a Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. And it achieved a score of 2,025,738. And the new first place score for the Red Magic 10 Pro Plus, provided that this is true, is huge. 3,116,126. That smashes the previous record, and I'm curious to see what other Snapdragon 8 Elites are going to test at. This is a very high number. I'm very curious on the cooling on the phone and how much it's affecting this number, and if other phones with the same chip can replicate the same scores, or at least similar. And to be honest with you, I don't know the difference here between the Red Magic 10 Pro Plus and a standard Red Magic 10 Pro. This is one of the first times I've seen the Pro Plus here, and I haven't been able to find any information about it on Red Magic's website. Next up, we're talking about the Hello Neighbor series of games. If you're unfamiliar with these, you may have seen people streaming them. It was released back in 2017, the original one here, to a very positive review score with over 12,000 reviews. It's a stealth horror game about sneaking into your neighbor's house and figuring out what he's hiding in the basement. Hello Neighbor 2 was released back in 2022. It's got a mostly positive review score with over 2,000 reviews. And in this game, you're a journalist investigating what happened in Hello Neighbor 1. And just recently, Hello Neighbor 3 was announced. It's a cozy yet eerie adventure where every path is the right one and every action leads to discovery. Explore and influence Raven Brooks, a half-abandoned town simulated in real time. Unfortunately, I don't know much more about this game other than the fact that I think people are going to be excited about it. Now, interestingly here, Hello Neighbor 1 seemed to be very well received. Hello Neighbor 2 seems to be less popular. And taking a look at some of the reviews on Steam, and some people are complaining about broken game elements and difficult puzzles. So I'm very curious to see how that's going to be improved in Hello Neighbor 3. Hello Neighbor 2 does have a free demo available. Hello Neighbor 1 doesn't. And if you've played these games, let me know your thoughts about Hello Neighbor 3 in the comments below if you're excited about it. And speaking about games that haven't released yet, next up we're talking about Infinity Nikki, and it's being reported that Infinity Nikki tops 30 million in registrations. That is a crazy amount of people who seem to be very excited about this game. And I guess hitting the milestone unlocks a bevy of treats for all who pre-register. So it's being reported that players across PC, PS5, and mobile devices will secure a 4-star outfit. 20 resonite crystals, 300 threads of purity, and 50,000 blings. I don't know what any of that stuff is, but I guess if you're excited about this game, you may be excited about this stuff. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a release date or a price or anything of that nature for you just yet. And I'm very curious to see how this game interacts between mobile, console, and PC platforms. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Taking a look at the game, it is my style of game and it's not at the exact same time and you'll exactly see what I'm talking about here. The platforming element of this game looks interesting. The overall world of the game looks interesting, but I don't exactly know everything that this game is going to entail. It just, it, it's an interesting one overall. I just, I don't know. I mean, to me, this game, I don't know. It's just, it's so weird. I've got no idea what exactly is going on here. But the platforming looks crisp. The gameplay looks crisp. Everything looks pretty good, and it reminds me of a whole bunch of different games. I can completely see why people are excited about this one, and I'm assuming the 30 million is real people who have signed up. Let me know your thoughts about this entire game in the comments below, and if seeing some of the gameplay has changed your mind on whether or not you might be interested in it. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. We talked about a bunch today. Let me know your thoughts about absolutely any of it in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state.